The purpose of today's experiment is to learn how to build the communication between a computer and an Arduino board in the ROS environment. First, you need to install ROS and Arduino ID in your computer and assuming that you are already you have already installed them in your computer. If not, you just uh, search them in Google and install them and in your computer is just pretty easy. So I just uh, skip to the second step to install ROS lib into the Arduino environment. So in the beginning, you have to install these three ROS packages, ROS stereo, ROS stereo Arduino, and ROS stereo Python. After that, uh, we need to create a ROS lib folder in the Arduino sketchbook location. You know, you want to find out where this location is, uh, you need to open your Arduino IDE I'm showing you here, then on this file menu, click preference in this dialog. This shows you where your sketchbook location is. So in this, for, for example, here in my computer, the sketch location, sketchbook location is this directory. So I can just copy it and in a terminal, boom, enter this directory. And then enter the libraries here. So if there is already a ROS lib folder here, there, I can simply delete them and rebuild it by running this command. Okay, after that, you should see a new ROS lib here. So then after you restart your Arduino IDE, And under the menu file, and you can go to examples. Here you should be able to see these examples under this term called ROS lib. When you see it, it means that you have successfully installed ROS lib in your Arduino environment. Okay. So next we need to you need to connect Arduino and USB serial converter to your PC what by the usb interface and also you need to connect the arduino the serial port to the usb serial converter serial port by the two bond lines and uh, following the picture showing here and uh, next uh, you should when you need to compare the esp2 code and upload it to your arduino board so the esp2 code um, can be found in the Mirabolt GitHub repo. In my computer, I already downloaded it. I'm going to go to my ROS workspace. So here, this folder named ROS for Mirabolt Master is the downloaded download, uh, Mirabolt GitHub repo. So I can go to this folder. And there is a subfolder called ESP2 ROS serial message. Case folder as well, and you can see here this one is the code we are going to test in this experiment. So we can open it at the bottom. So then, this is the source code. We can simply copy them and open and paste them to a sketch in the Arduino ID. For example, here we can save it somewhere. Uh, just go to yes, control. Something like that. Not this one. Replace. Okay. Then I can compile and upload it. So click compile. Then upload it. Yeah. The done uploading. You see, it means that the code has been successfully uploaded to your Arduino board. So remember one thing here, before you are uploading your code to your Arduino board, you have to specify the type of your Arduino board. So there are a list of different types. In my experiments, I'm using the Arduino Mega 2560 uh, this board. So I have to specify this selection here. So if you are using a different Arduino board, you will make sure to change that accordingly before you uploading your your code. Okay. Then next, uh, you need to run this program as a ROS node. 
To make it happen, you need to change the permission of the Arduino's zero port using these commands. So basically, it is just to give the permission to the program to read the data, to send data through this zero uh, port. You can just copy this command to change the permission of the zero port here. Then can run a ROS call to start running its environment for ROS. I open another terminal. Oh, ROS run. Okay, to start it because the ROS call has already been running. So I'm going to uh, skip it. Then you can call this command to start the program that you uploaded in the previous step and to make to, to start your program and make it run as a ROS node. It means that it gives the program permission to publish and subscribe messages in the ROS environment. Because this messenger mechanism is very easy for programs to send data from one program to another. So we can run it by calling this command. Okay, sounds good. So next up, you can run this display launch to change the joint states. The, the display the launch is also uh, can be found in the Mirrorboard GitHub repo. So we can go to my nose workspace, enter GitHub repo, and you can find this display the launch in the Mirrorboard. You must be to Folder and then lunch folder, don't lose lunch, display, okay. After doing that, you can see here this is the, the uh, mirror bolt model showing in the visualization tool of close, and this is imported by the URDM file we have created. And this dialog here, we can change the value of the joints and uh, uh, when we change the value, that's uh, this, uh, the location and the position of the mirror bolt it changes accordingly. So next, uh, we want to see whether these the values, the joint, the 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 joint states, the parameters had been sent to the Arduino board, and the Arduino board build received these values and send it out through the theory port. So we can. Just monitor the value of the theory reports. If we catch up the values there, this means that we are successfully building the communication between the program running in your computer and in your and the program running in your Arduino board. So what we do here, we can open this Arduino ID, the click tooth here, and open the theory monitor. And uh, you can see here that it's co constant constantly capture some values of the joint states. So the first, you can see there, the 0 0.06, that is equal to the value of the joint one. And if I change the, the value of joint two here, let's see what happens. Maybe for example, 0 0.41, you can see here the monitor, the successfully captured its value, it means that the third report successfully received the updated value of the joints. And I can also change the joint four as well. You can see here, there should be a, a value called minus 1.9 that you can see here. Okay, finally, you can also use this tool called the AccuKey graph to show, to see the running nodes in the in those environments and also the messages between them. So to run, we can open another terminal, call this command rose. Well, RQT graph. View. And in this, you can see here in the current rose environment, there are four running nodes that are joint state publisher, robot state publisher, mirror vault write node, and the serial node. And joint state publisher is this small dialog showing here that uh, receive the changing of the joints and the value are, ch uh, are changed and uh, this information will be sent out as a message called joint states 
and the, the robot state publisher will receive this message and encapsulates it into a new message called TF. The TF is not is the, the transformation matrix that can be used by the the visualization to reinforce to change the pose of this virtual uh, robot here. And the mirrorable to write note, the uh, H will get this join the, the value of this join the state and to generate a key, a G code and send the G code to a real mirrorable to throw the theory apart. And uh, in this uh, environment, we don't have a real mirrorable to connect to PC. So we will, we may we will show that in the next in our experiment. And this stereo node is the node that is running on the, your Arduino board that received its joint states and then send it out through the stereo port. That's where we can capture this value using our um, stereo monitor showing here. So, okay, basically, this is all for today's. Uh, uh, experiments. This is a, a little bit complex compared to the other experiments, and uh, I'm pretty sure that following these instructions step by step, you can learn a lot. Especially, uh, you know, we can learn how to build the communication between your computer and uh, Android board in you know, the ROS environment. Okay, thank you.